everyone, I'm back and I just finished my second week of training. It's been going good. I've been doing some tables in the morning and also some box breathing. Additionally, I've been trying to practice some stretching on my rib cage and my chest to try to open it up. I've also been testing my lung capacity or vital capacity, which is a measurement of total lung capacity, but just a part, not all of it. And my initial results are promising. I'm going to see over the next couple months if I can improve it. But for right now, I'm going to do a test for you guys so you can see where I'm at compared to the average male. So I'm going to do a four part breath where I'm going to start by breathing with my lower diaphragm. Once that's done, I'm going to pause. Then I'm going to breathe with my middle diaphragm, pause, breathe with my ribs, take another pause. Finally, do one more breath for using my shoulders for kind of my upper lung area. And then finally, I'm just going to do the last remaining intake that I can do. And I'm going to blow into this balloon and we're going to see where my lung capacity capacity or vital capacity, I should say, measures up compared to the average male. So here we go. Alright, so that's the air in my lungs that I can hold on one breath without packing. And we're going to do a simple circumference test to figure out what the capacity is in there in terms of liters. So if I can just get this. All right, so you can see that's going all the way around the balloon, nice and tight. I'm right at 76 centimeters. Which, if I use my big brain and do the math right in my brain, right on the spot, it comes out to be calculating. So I have a vital capacity of 7.4 liters and the average males is 4.8. So I'm pretty happy with that at the beginning of my training. I swam a lot when I was younger. I was a division one swimmer also for three years at the University of Notre Dame. So I'm pleased with that. It doesn't really surprise me to be honest. I wish I had a little bit more, but it's a good, it's a good start. And I think that's what's been helping me just progress rather quickly in static apnea standards. So right now my personal best is 641 and I was wearing a pulse oximeter, the well view or well you, excuse me. And my blood oxygen saturation got down to around 73% after the hold, which as you know, will happen, which is actually really good. And I think I could have pushed a little bit harder, but I didn't want to, I'm in training right now, so I don't want to be pushing that hard that often, unless it's perfect circumstances and I'm feeling really good, then I might go for a PB, but I'm shooting to get to seven minutes within the next two weeks. And yeah, we'll go from there. So I'll keep you guys posted on my training 
And this channel is basically for me to document my journey when it comes to breath holding. Is I find it really interesting, right? It's a perfect blend of mental and physical strength. Obviously, you need to be physically fit, and the more physically fit you are, the better, the lower your resting heart rate is, the more you can utilize oxygen in your, in your body more efficiently. But also, it's a real mental game, right? Because I think one of the worst feelings is the urge to breathe. It's one of the most primal fears. And if you can use your own mind to conquer that more primal part of your mind, it's really challenging, and it takes a lot of work. Um, a lot of CO2 tolerance is what people talk about. So yeah, I will keep you guys posted and I'm planning on posting at least a few videos a week just documenting my journey. And if you guys are enjoying this and want to ask me any questions or want me to talk about anything in specific, let me know. Otherwise, I'll just be talking generally about health stuff related to breathing, lungs, physical aspects of it, training, etc. So yeah, guys, take care and I'll see you in the next video.